The legal purge in Norway after World War II took place between May 1945 and August 1948 against anyone who was deemed to have collaborated with the German occupation of the country. Several thousand Norwegians and foreign citizens were tried and convicted for crimes committed in Scandinavia during the Second World War. However, the scope, legal basis, and fairness of these trials has since been a matter of some debate. A total of 40 people—including Vidkun Quisling, the Prime Minister of Norway during the occupation, were executed after capital punishment was reinstated in Norway. A further five were sentenced to death in Poland in 1947 for their actions in Norway. Topic. Background The German invasion of Norway during World War II created a number of constitutional issues, chiefly related to what was the legitimate Norwegian government, and whether the constitution and Norwegian code of law remained in effect during the occupation. Although the occupying power, under Reichskommissar Joseph Terboven and the puppet Norwegian regime under Vidkun Quisling claimed that the Norwegian government had abandoned its authority in the spring of 1940, the Norwegian government claimed that it had merely capitulated in the military struggle for the homeland, while the executive branch had been given special powers by the Norwegian parliament through the Elverum authorization. The Norwegian government's claim was upheld both by Parliament and the Norwegian Supreme Court after the war, which in turn led to an extensive set of indictments and convictions against Norwegian citizens for treason, and German citizens for war crimes. As early as 1941 and 1942, the Norwegian government in exile put into effect a number of decrees regarding treasonous acts. Capital punishment was reinstated as an option, prison sentences with hard labor were approved, higher upper limits for financial penalties introduced, and a controversial, new measure known as loss of public confidence. TAP AV Almen Tillet adopted, which would effectively deprive those convicted of various civil privileges. These decrees reached a final, workable form on 15 December 1944, the so-called Landsvikanordning. Crimes defined in these decrees notably included membership of National Samling, the Norwegian fascist party that collaborated with the Nazis. Topic: <inaudible> <inaudible> Culpable acts during the occupation. In autumn 1940, the Nazi supporting Norwegian fascist party, National Samling, was made the only legal political organization in Norway. Its claim to be the government was based on the premise that the pre-war leadership had abdicated its responsibilities by leaving Norway. As National Samling had taken the responsible course by assuming the mantle of power, it was therefore the legal administration. However it never achieved any level of support justifying its claim to be the legitimate Norwegian government. This was the view taken in London by Norway's government in exile. It saw the Nazi party and its Third Reich to be the enemy of war. Anything that aided or encouraged the German occupation of Norway was to be considered in principle an act of treason, this included membership of National Samling. Norway's exile government also considered it to be a criminal act to assist the Nazi regime through economic support and commercial activities. Norwegians who had volunteered for military service with the Wehrmacht, and especially Germanic SS were subject to criminal prosecution after the war. Police officers who worked with the RSHA in the Sikkerhetspolitet Norwegian Secret State Police or joined the Gestapo faced charges relating to war crimes, torture, executions, and the mistreatment of prisoners. Topic: <laughs> <laughs> Arrests, trials and executions. In May 1945, at the close of World War II, the paramilitary Malorg Norway's official resistance movement in the war joined units of the Norwegian police that had been trained in Sweden. Both had been well briefed and prepared ahead of the official liberation on 8 May 1945. The Norwegian government in exile assembled this force because it viewed it as paramount to avoid lynching or other extrajudicial punishment against former members of the Nazi regime. Nevertheless, during the summer of 1945, there was a fierce debate reported in Norwegian newspapers about the prosecution and punishment of war criminals and traitors. Many spoke openly of retaliation, but others argued that death penalty was a drawback for a civilized community. As tensions hardened, those fighting against the death penalty for humanitarian reasons were stigmatized as the Silk Front. Those who favored harsh penalties were known as the Ice Front. The editorial pages of Norwegian newspapers Dagbladet being one of the most prominent demanded harsh penalties reminiscent of a witch hunt. Within just a few days of the war ending, up to 28,750 people were arrested for questioning. 
Although many were released quickly, between 5,000 and 6,000 individuals were still detained in custody in August 1946. Former wartime resistance leader Sven Arnsen was made acting chief barrister of the Norwegian Prosecuting Authority. He was given the responsibility for bringing the cases to trial. Arnsen played a highly public role in establishing the principles that should drive the trials. This led to considerable public and internal debate about the nature of the legal purges. Altogether, prosecutors called for the death penalty in 200 cases of treason, of these, only 30 were passed down, with 25 being carried out. From the beginning, the application of capital punishment was controversial in Norway, in part because the country's first government instituted the death penalty before the Norwegian parliament had reconvened after the war. Legacy A great deal of sensitivity continues to surround this subject in Norwegian society. In later years, studies and inquiries have shown that justice was administered unevenly and—by today's standards—harshly. For example, the volunteers who joined the Waffen SS and served on the Eastern Front were only tried for treason, never for war crimes. People who sided with National Samling were often publicly shamed and ostracized well beyond the punishment their crimes merited, such as fines or a prison sentence. The prosecution of individuals who served with the German Red Cross has also been questioned. Among those to be convicted was Hanna Kavanmo, who later rose to fame as a socialist politician. <laughs> <laughs> Death sentences Topic: Treason. Topic: War crimes. Topic: Sentenced for war crimes by Allied law in Oslo, the 13th of December 1945. Eric Hoffmann was brought to Hamlin Prison in Germany and hanged by British executioner, Albert Pierpoint. He was executed by hanging because he was sentenced to death by an Allied war tribunal and not in a Norwegian court. <laughs> <laughs> sentenced by Poland for war crimes in Norway police and gendarmerie Kaldvatten and Lapelv. topic notes equals 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 citations